Puppy love is the purest love in life. There are many excellent novels about this miracle love that grabs audience attention by telling a story that most of them have experienced. This story is about two teenagers that fall in love, but unlike most other teenage romance stories, there's unresolvable twist. They both have cancer, and that story is about me. Augustus Waters and my lovely girlfriend Hazel Grace Lancaster. She is the most remarkable person that I have ever met in my life. Well, my former life. Now I am looking at my little girlfriend through a stupid TV in heaven. Although I hate the design of it, I must admit that flat TV is the only way I can see her. Sima, she is feeling great. She is eating dinner with her parents. A genuine smile spontaneously appears on my face when I see her smiling. She is herself now. Hey, basketball guy! There's an annoying loud voice behind my back. Oh, hey, Edward. Um, how's it going? I ask. Yeah, fine. Are you spying your girlfriend again? Come on, dude! You missed thousands of basketball matches in the best stadium in the heaven. I have never thought that one day I can have this opportunity. How about you? Every time I call you, you always answer that you're watching her, going to watch her. You're such a loyal guy. Don't you know that there are many girls in up here crazy about you? Oh, why are they crazy about an only guy? I burst into laughter. Oh, don't be ridiculous, your little chick. When God asked, blah 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 blah, Edward's rent fades out as my mind takes me back to the moment I first met Hazel. We met in the support group, which was held in a church basement by an overenthusiastic leader named Patrick. I attended as a friend of Isaac. Who has eye cancer? Hazel was there because of her mother's encouragement. I was staring at her because she was such a pretty girl. She had something that I couldn't stop looking at her, like I am now. She has short dark hair and beautiful green eyes. Afterwards, she realized that I was staring at her and started staring at me back. We kept staring at others until we stood up. And introduce ourselves. She diagnosed with stage four thyroid cancer with metastasis forming in her lungs. The sound not good. I came and talked to her. So, see you next time, maybe? She asked. At the moment, I didn't want her to say maybe we could meet again. I wanted to keep happening. I asked her to come to my house and watch Viva Vitenda together. I was surprised by myself why I could ask a girl to my house for the first time we met. I was even more surprised when she accepted. We spent lots of time together and shared our favorite books. She said that her favorite book was An Imperial Affliction by Peter Van Houten. Well, honestly, I. I didn't feel this book was my style, because this boring novel didn't contain strong troopers or zombies. I gave her my fantastic book, The Price of Dawn, to her and secretly put my number in there. She called me, and we chatted a lot about our books. Well, I have to admit that her novel was fabulous, but one thing that made me crazy and has a new about it. When she gave me that book, was we needed an ending. The novel stopped right in the middle of the climax, which made us unpleasant. I emailed Van Houten's assistant immediately. Not only I needed to know the ending, but also I knew my little girl would be extremely happy. Finally, he responded via her email account. They even invited us to go to Amsterdam to meet him. I decided to use my wish, which is like dying wish, to go to Amsterdam with her. However, we are more different than others. 
we had to meet our daughters to ask if international travel would kill us. Fortunately, they agreed that we could go. However, has a heart and headache. We was brought by poor oxygenation, which resulted from her lungs filling with fluid. While I was waiting in the hospital, I was so scared. I scared that I would lose her forever, and I haven't told her that I love her. Luckily, she came back with me, and our trip still occurred. But my mom didn't want that to happen. My boy, I know that you used your wish to go to Amsterdam with Hazel. Means you love her so much, and this trip is important to you. But can you consider it again? You know your health is not as good as before. Why do you have to do this? It's not worth. Because it is my life, mom. It belongs to me. I shouted to her, and now I feel regret that I jarred her face. How hard it is when she has to raise a cancer boy. Hazel's mom went with us to make sure that we were okay. That was the first time I traveled by plane. It was so amusing, and we spent more time together. I can still remember how I shouted to her because of excitement. That was embarrassed. We watched movies together, asked her to read a poem aloud for me. When she was reading the poem, I looked at her. "I'm in love with you," I said quietly. I was thinking how scared I was when she's sick. Now or never. She looked so surprised. "I am," I continued. I'm in love with you, and I'm not in the business of denying myself the simple pleasure of saying true thing. I'm in love with you, I said quietly. I was thinking how scared I was when she's sick. Now or never. She looked so surprised. I am, I continue. I'm in love with you, and I'm not in the business of denying myself the simple pleasure of saying true thing. I'm in love with you, and I know that love is just a sound into the void, and that oblivion is inevitable, and that we're all doomed, and that there will come a day when all our labor has been returned to dust, and I know the sun was one of the only earth we ever have, and I'm in love with you. Augustus, she said my name. Seems like she didn't know what to do. She just looked at me. I felt pretty disappointed. I nod and turn away, place the side of my head against the window. We arrive at Amsterdam the day after. In the evening, we have a date. I wore a black suit, narrow lapels, perfectly tailored, over a light blue dress shirt, and a thin black tie. She wore a sundress with blue print, flowery knee length. That was the most wonderful date I have ever had in my life. The next day, we went to Van Houten's house. Well, that was not a good memory. That drunk made Hazel upset with his rudeness and cruelty. He initially denies having invited us and said his invitation was merely rhetorical. He didn't expect us to show up. The chaotic scenes came to a halt. When Van Houten accused Hazel of being dependent on people's pity and a side effect of evolution, she cried. I was extremely mad and annoyed. I dragged her outside. I promised her that I would write for her my epilogue to an imperial fiction. Afterwards, Lady Wee, who was Van Houten's assistant, apologized and suggested us to end Frank's house. God, this part was the best. We kissed. I will never forget the moment she said she loved me. However, I didn't feel good in the morning. More importantly, I assumed that I should have told her my health was not as good as I said to her. It was worse because the cancer cells were increasing in my body. The next day, I came to meet her. I told her about the truth of my health, and said sorry to her for my foolishness. It's not fair, she cried. It's just so goddamn unfair. I'll fight it. I'll fight it for you. 
Don't worry about me, Hazel Grace. I'm okay. I will find a way to hang around and annoy you for a long time. I try to calm her down as well as myself. You get to battle cancer. That is your battle, and you will keep fighting. She kept telling me, which made me feel so painful. After the Amsterdam tour, my health was worse and worse. I didn't tell Hazel because she would worry about me. Besides, I didn't tell her that I was working on an ample look for her. One night, I had a serious chest pain that I couldn't handle it. Finally, I end up at the ER. Most stupidly, I had to sit in a dual wheelchair because walking might affect my heart. It wasn't cool at all. Later, I met Hazel, my friends, and my family in the waiting room. They look worried, and that made me feel bad. One morning, I lay on my bed and thought about my life. I love basketball, although I have always denied it. Because of my insane cancer, I lost my right leg, which took away all my opportunities. I just wanted to be healthy, like everyone else. I decided to get up, try to reach my wheelchair. I wanted to go to the gas station to buy a pack of cigarettes, or my metaphor, like I usually did before. Just a little thing. I wanted to do it by myself. However, when I came there, there was something wrong with the G top, and I couldn't figure it out. In depression, I thought about Hazel, who was the only person I could call. Hazel Grace, I said weakly. Oh, thank God it's you! Hi, hi, I love you, she said. It helped calm me down a little bit. Hazel Grace, I'm at the gas station. Something's wrong. You gotta help me. What? Where are you? She sounded extremely worried. She appeared in front of me after five minutes. It was two twenty-five a.m. I was so glad that she came. She called nine one one, dismissed my disagreement, and called me down. A week later, I called Isaac and Hazel to meet me at the literal heart of Jesus. I asked them to speak at my funeral. Besides, I wanted to edit my genealogy. They cried a lot. Isaac even said when the scientists of the future show up at his house with robot eyes and they told him to try them on, they would tell him to screw off because he didn't want to see a world without me. I've always feel oblivion that everyone would forget about Augusta Waters. That's why I was greatly appreciative that they felt I was an important person with them. About Hazel. She kept saying how grateful she was for our little infinity. Well, I'm pretty satisfied with my pre-funeral. I hope that I could attend my funeral as a ghost. Well, I could say that my dream came true. They were organizing my funeral, and I was watching them. It felt not bad when I became a ghost. At least I didn't sit on the stupid wheelchair. I have chest pain every night. Everyone was miserable, especially Hazel, which made me feel bad. She kept calling me to hear my voicemail. My parents appeased her. The funeral started with a eulogy. Fortunately, my boy Isaac didn't make fun of his dead friend like he did at my pre-funeral. Honestly, it satisfied me. When they lowered my body into the ground, the whole atmosphere was enveloped with mourning. My parents sank their knees in the dead wet grass and moaned in pain, while Hazel was collapsed next to them. I wanted to console them, but I couldn't. I just could say that I was sorry for everything. Later, I took a tour of my funeral. Surprisingly, I met Van Houten, and Hazel was talking to him. He apologized to my girlfriend, who revealed that he and I corresponded a little bit. Finally, with a small hint, 
she discovered the letter that I sent to Van Houten before about her. I sent it to him in case something bad happened to me, and I knew that she would find it. And well, it happened. After reading my letter, she came back to Hazel before because she understood that was the only wish I wanted. I miss her. I miss her so much. I miss how she reacted with my metaphor, or how we said okay to others as a special word. Sometimes I want to steal her to heaven with me. We can live happily together as a normal couple. But she still has family and friends. They will be hurt so much if she leaves them. And I know, my girl, she will never abandon them, like she did with me. But I want her to know that I will always waiting for her, in here, despite any situation. I do, Hazel. I do.